Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of mercy to all who call to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I could not talk to you as spiritual people, but as fleshy people, as infants in Christ. I fed you milk, not solid food, because you were unable to take it. Indeed, you are still not able, even now, for you are still of the flesh. While there is jealousy and rivalry among you, are you not of the flesh and walking according to the manner of man? Whenever someone says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely men? What is Apollos, after all, and what is Paul? Ministers, though, ministers through whom you became believers, just as the Lord assigned each one. I planted Apollos. I planted Apollos water, but God caused the growth. Therefore, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who causes the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, for each will receive wages in proportion, in proportion to his labor. For we are God's co-workers, you are God's field, God's building. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial song. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down, he sees all mankind. Blessed the people the Lord, the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. own. From, his fixes, from his fixed throne he beholds all who dwelt on the earth. He who fashioned the heart of each, he who owns all their works. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. 
for in him our hearts rejoice. In his holy name we trust. Blessed are the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus left the synagogue, he entered the house of Simon. Simon's mother-in-law was afflicted with a severe fever, and they interceded with him about her. He stood over her, rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up immediately and waited on them. At sunset, all who had people sick with various diseases, brought them to him. He laid his hands on each of them and cured them. And demons also came out from many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and did not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus left and went to the deserted place. The crowds went looking for him, and when they came to him, They tried to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, To the other towns also I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God, because for this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive wages in proportion to his labor. For we are God's co-workers, you are God's field, God's building. The other day in yesterday's gospel, as we see in today's gospel, we see one of the many exorcism narratives as well as healing narratives uh, that take place within the gospels. And yesterday I talked about some of the dangerous snares we face in the spiritual life if we violate the first commandment, if we serve other identities or powers other than God in order to puff up ourselves or build ourselves up. And I pointed out within the diocese here in Springfield, we have a problem with a certain group of religious promoting, essentially, not essentially, promoting, literally, witchcraft, through the practice of Reiki, other forms of Native American shamanism, uh, and the list can go on. But one of the things I want to do, because somebody very kindly tried to reach out to me via Facebook, and I'm not on Facebook, and you won't find me ever on Facebook, um, minus this being broadcast through Facebook, uh, one of the things they pointed out is they said to me, uh, or attempted to say to me was, Father, We need to hear a loving gospel. How dare you ridicule these these holy women going out to the periphery, you know, versus those who just simply read the Bible and talk about it. And so, I want to explain something of what the nature of a loving message is. Because if we read the gospels carefully, everything our Lord did, everything our Lord said was loving. But boy, did he offend a great number of people. He did it so well, they decided to kill him. Think about that for a second. Is it a loving thing 
to lead somebody away from God through a practice of idolatry? The answer is no. All of the saints, especially I would like to quote a very famous religious saint, St. Saint Catherine of Siena, points out that when we violate the commandments of God, that's bad. But when we teach others to sin, when we deliberately and maliciously lead people away from God, St. Catherine of Siena, a doctor of the church, and yes, a woman, boldly proclaimed that we usurp the role and office of the demons. We begin doing the work of Satan himself, and we say, take a load off your feet if you had any. Relax a little. I can do your evil bidding for you. And this is the problem. Think about it. If you're a parent and you see your child playing in a dangerous street or near a body of water where they're in danger of drowning or near any other type of threat, what are you going to do? You're going to try to get them away from there. And if they're too far for you to instantly reach, you're going to yell to them. Get away from there. Come back, even if it startles the child. Even if the child thinks that you're rebuking them and punishing them. And it is a type of rebuke. But what you are doing is loving them. You're trying to protect their livelihood. When the clergy have to preach about things that are going awry, we're doing it out of love. We're doing it to warn our people of the dangers that are out there. We have a long history of lawsuits that document the failures of the priests and bishops throughout the world, specifically in the Western world predominantly in Europe and the United States of America and Canada. And so, why do we not hide from that, from the publications that have come out? Because we want to warn people of the dangers that are there, that even people who profess to serve the Lord and have committed themselves to serve the Lord through their human weakness and frailty, they are capable of betraying the gospel, of following the evil one. In the diocese here, we have many holy religious sisters. Sometimes we're blessed to be visited by the Franciscan sisters from Holyoke who come here. They do great work within this diocese. As well as, as far as I know, the sisters of Notre Dame who are also in Holyoke who take care of the ill and the dying. The two key places that need to be investigated and which seem never to be done are Elms College and Genesis Spiritual Center. Genesis Spiritual Center, all you got to do is go online and look up their brochure of what they're offering, and you'll find many things being taught there that are not Catholic. And it will be religious sisters and even priests who are teaching the errors. I hear from many people who have attended the Elms College that in the theology department, Marxism, socialism, two things that are inherently contrary to the Catholic faith and are rooted in diabolical evil, the church is always rightfully taught, as well as Reiki, are taught as some form of outreach to the periphery, the way in which we are going to reach the poor. And this is all nonsense. The reason why we have to call these things out, the reason we call a spade a spade, is because if we don't call it out ourselves, somebody else will do it for us. And it will be a lot more embarrassing when the heathen secular world calls us out for our hypocrisy, rather than we ourselves saying, we have a problem, and it needs to be addressed. So what are we going to do? First, recognize the evil and avoid it. Two, pray for all individuals involved, especially those who have been led astray. Because the goal, three, is to bring about the healing, not only of the mystical body of Christ, healed from error, healed from sin, healed from scandal, but that, so that in being healed, in that the mystical body having a wholeness, that we can be the witness to the world so that the whole world, through faith, might be incorporated into the mystical body of Christ through the sacrament of baptism. It's only when we address these things, and also when we speak to one another in confidence, as well as in person, not hiding behind other forms of communication, 
that this comes about. We live in a society that likes to take pot shots from afar. And we all do it at some point in our lives. We're all guilty. I myself am guilty of it. Uh, God forgive me. Um, but the key thing is that we have to speak the truth. To be warned of a danger is not to be preaching a gospel that is not loving. It is to be warned of an error that is not the gospel and therefore to be warned of something in which love does not exist at all. And so let us continue to do the healing work of the Lord. Let us continue to do as St. Paul says, not focus on individual and charismatic persons, but on Jesus Christ himself who does all good works with and through us because apart from God, we cannot be called God's co-workers. Apart from God, we cannot be helping in the process of building up the kingdom of God. And apart from God, we cannot be called God's field and therefore produce a fruitful harvest for eternal salvation. It's always a little uncomfortable. It's always a little concerning when we hear such things, especially if it's for the first time. But imagine how much more frustration it is to have seen these things go on for years and watch it go unchecked. We have to do something about it. It's not going to be up to the administration because this is going to be something that requires the conversion of souls. And so I would ask all of you to pray for me and to pray for all involved in ministry in any way, form, or matter that we may be faithful to the charism God has given us. Not to make ourselves faithful, uh, no, to make ourselves faithful, not to make ourselves more popular, not to make ourselves more uh, spiritually famous, whatever the case may be, or even more powerful, but most, impor most importantly, that in a spirit of true authenticity by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may live lives that resemble Christ, that we may decrease so that Christ may increase in each and every one of us, and that his truth may be known by all. May God bless us this day and always. Trusting in God, we make our petitions known to him. For the church and her shepherds, may God's grace continue to protect and guide them as they share the good news of the kingdom of God with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those serving in positions <coughs> of public authority, may the wisdom of God lead them in decisions of justice and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those suffering from physical and emotional illnesses, may the healing hand of Jesus rest upon their bodies and minds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the members of the worshiping community, for the members of this worshiping community, may the Holy Spirit help us to bear great fruit as co-workers in God's vineyard. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died in the peace of Christ, May they one day rise with him to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. In a special way today, we remember Eileen Murphy, Paracolsi, and James Avis, requested by Francesca. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the prayers written in our Book of Remembrance, those that we've been asked to pray for, and those that we lift up from the depths of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving Father, we ask that you graciously receive our prayers and bring them to fulfillment in accord with your holy will. We ask this in the name of your only begotten Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to 
his disciples say, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, and the Lord of the Father, and the Lord of the Holy Spirit, and death give life to the world from you, and this one is for the body of God, from all my sins, and for the evil. Keep me away, say, to the kingdom. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. On a pastoral note, if you ever have a problem with a homily and you want it to be a private matter, come and speak with the priest in person so that a good dialogue and conversation could be had. Letters, emails, anything of that nature is fair game to be made public, especially if it's going to be shared with other people. Um, so again, if you want to have a private conversation with the priest, we will respect the charity and courage of those we can come and speak to us in person. Uh, but again, uh, if complaints or jabs are made through forms of public media or anything of that manner, um, that's the public domain, whether we realize it or not, uh, and it will be addressed publicly. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, St. John the Evangelist.